a totally different thing. With our graduates from a few years back now, um, and a very famous graduate, Guy. <laughs> <laughs> so, hello, Guy. And, um, and well, Guy, when was you with us? How long ago? I was trying to work. Um, so, I was with you two years ago? Was it two years ago or three? I can't remember. Two, I think. Well, oh. last year doesn't count, so I think it was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> last year's not count at all. We're forgetting 2020. Yeah, we just missed that one out. So it was three years ago, and I did, I think I finished in March, didn't I? <laughs> I think it was something like that, yeah, yeah. We had, we had so much fun when you was here. Yeah. And no, that, we had so much fun when he left. I know, I know but listen, I mean, for you guys that are listening, Guy did come in a slightly different sort of route, because... Um, what happened is Guy was working with me in the crowd room on Aladdin um, and how that came about um, was that you came in um, to help for the, on the fashion thing because Guy's background was from Mac. Um, correct me if I'm wrong here because I'm kind of going from all of my memory of yeah. you, obviously my fond memories of you, um, <laughs> but, but Guy came from a Mac, Mac background and came out on Aladdin to help us doing the fashion show and the parade. And I remember talking to you in the crowd room and kind of just really loving all of the stuff you was coming up with, you know, because your your, your makeups were just incredibly, you, you just weren't scared of colour at all. And I think obviously because of my background and, and, and what I do, I, I tend to kind of look at glitter and go, flipping hell, move it away from me. You know, <laughs> going, come on, come on, bring it on. And, um, and I kind of just, I really remember meeting you and, and it's kind of, which I kind of think is always quite a significant thing. And, and, and it's, it's been a joy for me watching you go from strength to strength. As soon as you left us, you pretty much, um, Nadia, you, you pretty much snagged him up, didn't you? <laughs> How did you find out about Guy? Can I? Yeah, you... so um, I was uh, doing, um, everybody's talking about Jamie. So I got the job to make the stage show into a film. And um, it was a lot of the original people were making it, the original director, choreographers, everybody that was involved in the stage show. And so the director had said to me, look, no pressure, but the guy that did uh, the makeup for the poster and devised all the original drag makeup for Jamie um, is, you know, trying to get into to doing filming, he's a brilliant makeup artist. And if there's any way that you could use him at all during the filming, and be really grateful. And so I was like, yeah, absolutely. And so at that point I thought, well, I'll try and get him out to do some days and meet him. and. And then the more I've thought about it, I thought, well, he was such a kind of integral part of it. And, um, but I found Guy and I, I saw his background and I was like, I can't, because he didn't have the film experience, I thought, I don't know how to bring him into the team full time. And I thought he's never gonna come on as a junior just because he's so experienced. So I sort of said to him, look, I don't wanna, you know, offend you, but the, do you want to come in and kind of gain the experience for the filming? But also, you know, we'd love your kind of, talent on board and he just snapped it up and that's one of the that's the one of the great things about him actually is that there's always been that complete humility of like no I want to learn so whatever his background was and in terms of that kind of maker just kind of blows us all away but was really willing to come on board and so he came on the main team and created his magic on Richard E. Grant amongst others um, and showed us all how to do drag makeup and uh, I've never let him go since basically. <laughs> well, I, listen, I'm, I'm, I know. <laughs> Can I get my, no, I'm literally part of your team. Um, but I tell you also um, what was so so good, and I'm kind of sort of going off track now. But um, no, it's just this whole sort of like thing. If, if like um, a lot of you guys that are watching, I know that you're sort of watching this sort of like obviously thinking that you'd have to go sort of like trainee junior i mean the, the part of the reason that guy managed to bypass that because he came on to you onto your job as part of your team initially didn't he so you kind of bypass the whole trainee part of work which which and which can be done i, 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 I mean this is this is sort of an interesting thing i mean it's kind of sort of like nadia obviously knew it's it was very much like sort of the thing that we've got to remember about guy is his background was at matt i mean you was a matt you was a, a Quite a big cheese in Mac as well. Well, so I worked for Mac about I worked for Mac for about six years, but then I left to I went freelance about four years ago. So I was I had a Mac, a Mac background, but I was actually working in sort of fashion and beauty. So that was kind of my yeah. So I had that was definitely my experience and my background. But then obviously wanted to move into film. Yeah, 
but but it's, it's 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 actually having that discipline because the, even working in fashion you know i kind of sort of see i mean makeup is makeup per se you know sort of you've got to have a discipline to get up in the morning and do it and create and be inventive and everything um but anyway listen this is it, it, it's brilliant i love the fact that you two work together and i'm, I'm always so sort of like proud of who you are um partly because i, I do remember your makeup very clearly <laughs> It's that kind of humbleness and, and, and it was the willingness to learn. And I think sometimes when people come in from a background uh, where they're kind of already in the industry, it's kind of quite hard to kind of sort of drop everything and say, OK, I'm here to learn. I'm going to start again. And I think it's kind of like even if you're even if we can push you out as a junior or an assistant straight away, the most important thing when you're doing any kind of course, for my mind, is that you leave everything at home and you come in with a clear head and you go, oh, do you know, I'm going to learn and I'm going to I'm going to learn the way that the teachers are going to teach me. I remember when I was a hairdresser and kind of doing my course all those years back and being taught, told to cut hair with like seven inch scissors. And I was just like, oh, God, how am I going to do this? Anyway, we digress. So mainly oh. um, we've, got, um, we've got the very exciting uh, Cruella up and coming I, and I know there's not much that you can talk about because it's not released till May is that right yeah I think at the moment it's May yeah um but can I ask you a couple of questions about the design on it um yeah. and it, it, I mean partly I mean obviously I'm only going by what I've seen on the trailer and everything uh, and on the internet but it looks a lot darker um now people are sort of saying to me that the original cartoon was quite dark but did you how did you kind of how far did you know how to push it, it looks incredible by the way it looks absolutely incredible um well when i when i got it i mean craig gillespie was um directing it and he did i Tonya. i don't know if you saw that from a, a few years ago and um and he's much more of an indie filmmaker so he's kind of a, a strange choice for it actually for a disney film and um but so i knew kind of and he is massively into music and he's really you know he's really into kind of punk music and stuff like that so i knew he was gonna push it and do something different with it and he kept saying not to look at it as a Disney movie. We're making like a 1970s punk movie. That was that was the way to look at it. Um, and but there's it does come with that thing that it's such an iconic character. It's finding the balance to those diehard fans and diehard Disney fans. They wanna they wanna see snippets of what they know. You know they want so there's lots of things throughout the film that won't disappoint. That they'll spot things that is in the cartoons or there's you know. Um, there's reference to who she was and also it's an origin story so we have to we have to create Cruella but then believe that what we create with Emma Stone goes into what you know with Glenn Close so it you need you need there needs to be some sort of continuation from that um, but it's yeah it's set in 1977 in London and um, uh, very much she's a she's a kind of punk and her friends are punks and so right from the get-go I knew that we could have a bit of fun with it and Craig was really keen to just let us Thanks. push it you know to do it it felt like whatever idea we came up with wasn't too much to be honest and I mean for me and Guy that was like great <laughs> <laughs> just like went nuts <laughs> who was the costume designer on it Jenny Bevan oh Jenny yeah brilliant yeah so she was brilliant and I went in from the beginning and you know it was huge for me. I mean, I was like very overwhelmed, very, a lot of points of it. It was just kind of crazy amounts of um, crowd and cast and uh, just massive. And then it transpired that I had been requested for me to look after Emma hair and makeup. And I was like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, plus design the whole thing. Um, and Jenny said, you have to you have to go at it as if we're going to, like you would eat an elephant, chunk by chunk. And I was like, okay, cool. So I kept remembering it all the way through. That's how to approach it. <laughs> Joe, it's interesting, a couple of things that you've just sort of said. I mean, I kind of remember when you're saying you, you have to give jobs, especially with Disney, maybe with all the other big studio stuff. But I found that on Aladdin as well, that, that, that I had to give a little nod on the Jasmine, you know, the hair at the end had to be that iconic sort of big, long, boofy thing. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, and so, so when you're setting up a, a production like that, I mean, obviously 
I mean, it's great that Emma sort of like came without a team and, and that you're kind of sort of, so, so how does it work? I mean, obviously as, as designers, we, we, we all have our different sort of ways of doing things. I know that with me, what I'll do is I'll design the look and then I'll allocate her to someone. And obviously like on Aladdin, there's no way I can do the leads because it's so, it's so big. Designing is so big now. You know, you have so much that you're having to do, you know, what with overseeing the, the crowd and overseeing all of the new people that are coming in. Um, so do you do that kind of thing? Do you kind of set up your look and then do you, do you pass them over? Well, more and more now, as you said, I, I, I don't look after anyone that's kind of on set a lot. You know, I, I, it's, it's, I remember Lisa Westcott saying she didn't even feel she picked up a brush on Les Mis because she couldn't, you know, it's too big. It's too big to design and you've got to go and just see the crowd calls and they need you. And it's like, and so I would never have chosen to look after Emma. I mean, that wasn't, you know, it wasn't a choice. We had a pre-existing relationship, obviously, from the favourite. And she, she asked me to do this and uh, asked me to look after her. Um, and I sort of, and hence actually why Guy came in, because I started to look at it, started to design it and was like, this is massive and I'm just not going to have the time to do this. She has a different look every time you see her. So there's not one Cruella look. It's like completely different wig, different look all the time. And I knew what I wanted to do, but I was very aware of timings in the chair. And like we said, I might then have to run off and see the crowd or how am I going to do this? And um, so I thought I need some help. Basically, I couldn't I was I couldn't see how to do it quick enough. I, I knew what I wanted to do, but I couldn't figure it out. It was all like I had masses of references and masses of mood boards. Um, so I had to call in backup. And um, so a phone guy and he was actually finishing up on um, everybody's talking about Jamie. And I just said, can you come down? Can you get the train down? Cause they were up in Sheffield and come and look. And I remember being sat across the table with him and just going, this is what I like. And there was like masses of kind of books and pictures and random things too. It's like, I like the kind of pink in that hair there, but I like this or whatever it is. And the brilliant thing about guys is that he's, um, he has a really great background and knowledge of art and photography and um, films. And so I can show him a random, I can say, oh, I went to the Tim Walker exhibition and I saw this and I liked it. And he'll know and go, oh yeah, well then maybe we could do this or do that. So I suddenly felt like, oh, I've got someone I'm twerking off here. And so then we got a, a background artist in, um, roughly kind of an Emma lookalike and um, just what had a play and kind of had a mess around with all these different things and looks and it just fitted into place for me because because of Guy's background as well in fashion he's so quick for a start because you have to be um, and I've never worked in that kind of area at all and like you and you know with glitter or hey we could use this pigment on there and I was like Ugh. but um, he's he said oh that look you want we can do that in three products and I was like oh wow this whole massive punk look yeah yeah just use a pencil for that same pencil for this do that so it became achievable because he came on board basically so that, oh. relation, that relationship between obviously you and and someone you know doing a person on the main character is character is really important you know and it's not just someone who's got great skills it's communicating with each other Totally. And, you know, that, and that for me in that first step to be, to have that person that you can like bounce off that you can, you know, say I'm struggling here and I don't know. Cause as a designer as well, like everyone thinks, you know, that you're going to know exactly what to do. And so for me to go, I've no clue how I'm going to do this. I don't know. And I would, I know what's up here, but I don't know. I've, and, always, I've always said that, that, that we facilitate, do you know what I mean? And we, yeah. we, we, we know the talent of our crew. Guy, I'm going to have to say, let get you in on, on this as well, because you, you've you got to, come on. Yeah, <laughs> come on, Guy. When Nadia first sort of spoke to you. Um, um, I agree with everything that's been said. <laughs> 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 well, obviously for me, it was the most unbelievably amazing opportunity I've ever had. <laughs> and I couldn't quite believe it. And I had to pinch myself every day that I was going into work to, you oh, know. Sorry. In. Like, like, so when when Nadia first called you to to go off and do the Jamie one, well, you yeah, crying, and then. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, obviously, um, I remember actually when I had the first conversation with Nadia, I was on a fashion job, and I had already spoken to the director and said and said that I'm really, really desperate to get onto this film because I could see it as 
you know, a stepping stone. And I also wanted to experience what it was like to work in film and on a main team and kind of see it through. And I kind of had that, that sort of like, you know, I felt a little bit of ownership over a little portion of that story. And so I really wanted to see it evolve and to be involved in that. So then luckily, yeah, the director was kind enough to put my details to Nadia. And so she called me and I was on this fashion shoot and I had, I just said, I've got to go outside. I need to speak to this. I need to answer this phone call. And then, um, yeah, she off, she really kindly said, you know, I'm going to try and fit you in and figure out where you could work in the team. And then it happened. So I went up to Sheffield and worked on that. Um, and that feels like 10 years ago, but <laughs> what with everything that's happened. And then, yeah, so I was doing Richard E. Grant, which was, again, totally iconic. <laughs> and he was amazing. He wasn't scared of a bit of slap. So that worked really well with me. <laughs> <laughs> so then yeah we finished that job and then um as we were coming towards the end as Nadia said she was already in heavily into the prep for Cruella and so then I went down I think I went down, didn't we do two we did two little fittings didn't we so yeah. I yeah trained it down from Sheffield for a day to go and do these tests and again I was kind of pinching myself all the way thinking I can't believe that this is happening that I'm able to go from one job straight onto another that kind of like it was just getting more and more yeah kind of crazy in my head but I loved it obviously and um yeah was able to kind of have my input which was even more amazing because I thought you know but maybe I'll get to go on to a Cruella and just do crowd again or something you know keep my experience going but to go and yeah. work on the main actor actress was kind of bonkers <laughs> It's beautiful makeup and it is, it's very much, you know, I, I know that it's your, it has a definite, you've got a stamp about it. Mm. Make a great working team, I really do, because I think, I think, like, you know, Nadia, as, as you're sort of saying, it's like as a designer, it's, you kind of need people around you that you can kind of throw things at. And I, I think when you have a working relationship, like you two guys seem to have like formulated, it's, it, 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 it's invaluable. It really is because you know that, that you can kind of probably push it outside of the boundaries that you would usually push it. You know because it, because you don't you don't have to worry about that that particular look and everything. Did you ever imagine when you was doing the course guy that it was going to take off quite so quickly and quite so massively? Not at all. I was I, obviously I loved doing the course because I obviously focused more on the elements that I wasn't so confident in. So like hair, obviously was a big thing for me because I hadn't picked up a hairbrush or you know any kind of hair tool in my career. So that was something that I had to really, I really wanted to focus on and to get my skills up with, yeah, so like hair, special effects, casualty, those were the things that I really focused on um, because I wanted to become, you know, a, a, a sort of well-rounded artist that could then move into film. So obviously I didn't need to do the beauty and the kind of makeup side of things. So yeah, doing the course was absolutely invaluable to me and every single day I was going in just thinking, you know, I need to make the most of this and learn as much as I can um, and just kind of mine all of the tutors and ask them so many questions so that I could just get that knowledge. Um, so then, yeah, it was just, I think it's what you put in is what you get out of it. So I was really um, focused on learning as much as I could. But I think, I think, or, or, you know, just to add there, you know, Guy, the, you know, why, why Guy did so well was, um, that he didn't, you know, there was no ego. There was no, there was no, um, uh, you know, oh, I know lots of things. I'm just going to pick up a little bit of hair and stuff like that. He literally came in as if he didn't know anything at all. He was eager, you know, sort of, you know, first in, last out. He was so keen. It was wonderful. And that, well, everyone should be doing that anyway, you know, but, but you know, for Guy to do it, it was, it was you know, his white thing. And, and that's why he's doing so well now. I think that's absolutely like, that, that's what I would say about him and anyone that's listening to think, oh, how do you go from doing that course and then jumping straight into to working on main team? And it's kind of testament to Guy that, okay, the, the makeup skills are there. That's absolutely without doubt. But um, there's, like I say, there's a brilliant uh, kind of reference and he's constantly learning about films and um, all those kind of little nuggets that you can bring into design and help. So he's always doing that. But then there's, there's absolutely that kind of humility to come in as a junior and he's coming on to my next job as a junior because it's a very heavy on the hair it's 1955 and lots of hair 
And so I'm giving him characters that are going to push him. There's lots of big hairstyles for his character. And it's, he's like, I said, if you come in as a junior and you learn that by the time you come out, you're going to have so many more skills. And there's never a second of, mm, I don't know. I feel like I've moved up at the, never, ever. He's more than happy to do it. And that, you know, for me, knowing that I was going to have to juice him, introduce him to Emma as well and work on Emma when she has so much trust in me to say, hey, I need to bring someone in to help. I never had a doubt that she wouldn't <laughs> love him. And it was, I just said, you will, you'll absolutely love him. And he's brilliant. And it was just, and I think it's that thing of um, reading a room and reading situations as well as for, for a trainee or a junior. Sometimes it's really, sometimes it's time to have fun and we can mess around and have a laugh. And other times it's really stressful and it's weird. There's a lot going on and guy seems to be able to flick into that very quickly and easily. So there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of skill base there that isn't just about makeup. A lot, of, a lot of that as well is down to, um, I mean, being able to put somebody on, on the main bus. I, I, you know, I know, uh, I mean, even when, when, when we do our works experience um, with our graduates, it's, it's usually run through the crowd room. Um, and I have to really be careful about who <laughs> to, the, to the main bus because it, it is that there, there's a certain thing that comes off of people do you know what I mean and, and it's like and, and being on the main bus it, it, you've got there's a certain type of character that's required and it really is that having somebody who can who can do the job but it isn't going to override personality wise as well isn't it it's a very tricky balance the main bus it's really it's really hard and it um and I just think when you've got it you can see it a mile off I just I just think there's I don't know what it is sometimes we we just go yeah they've got it yeah. Uh, it's, it's being keen, but without being kind of too noticeable. <laughs> you have to really sort of, you really sort of have to read it, don't you? And fit in and when to, and yeah. for us as well, because we've had to adapt that skill when you get an actor and you don't know if they're going to want to be jumping around and loud or if they're just going to sit there quiet reading their lines or, you know, it's, it, yeah. it's a skill we have to have. Like that one day and then quiet the next day and you have to know, it's, it's that sort of thing. It's almost gauging the first 10 minutes, you know, are we putting yeah. music or are we going to keep it quiet today? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've got a quick question here for Guy coming in quickly. Um, Guy, were there any moments that you felt fear, like you couldn't do yeah. something properly on set? Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I live my life as a ball <laughs> of human anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm actually, now that we're in, uh, in COVID, I'm actually quite pleased because most of my face is covered up so they can't see how red I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, what, the silver lining of COVID. The PPE covers up my, my meatball face. <laughs> well, we had this conversation about, about fear the other day, didn't we, Pete? I remember I was talking to one of the graduates from the last course and, and, and I was like, so, do you know, I still, I still can't sleep the night before we start filming. I don't oh. think goes away I just don't think that goes away and it shouldn't go away you just need to channel it into a different kind of energy I think yeah, yeah. absolutely I'm always the same it's like the first night before starting school isn't it it's that you just can't even if you feel like well, I kind of I'm, I'm all right I know what I'm doing but just yeah it's awful it takes a while to settle in but I think the good thing was with Cruella that we kind of cushioned each other because we were both absolutely petrified <laughs> every day. I think being scared and having that fear shows that you care because you want to do it the best that you possibly can. You know, if you were too blasé, you wouldn't focus on making it the best that you could. Um, but yeah, absolutely we, petrified. You know, we, we had days when it, the, the, the nature of it was that it moves so fast and the different looks that she had all the time. We didn't get to test hardly any of them. No. Um, we were testing sometimes on people in the truck, but we didn't get to test them on Emma because she was in every single scene pretty much. Mm -hmm. So there were things that, I mean, honestly, I can't tell you too much about the looks, but I will tell you that she's, we used stencils on her. We used pearls, we used jewels, we used feathers. We used, she's got makeups that are like, I mean, every, there's some huge things. And there was times that Guy and I were just like, covered in prosade with tweezers <laughs> stuck to our fingers still not knowing like is everyone going to be up and you get to set with that like what's people's reaction to her and it, we were so it was pretty it's pretty petrifying for both of us <laughs> what a great thing to design i've got to say just a great thing to design what about the hair who, who was doing the um the hair the wigs and things well i was doing hers so i was but i mean honestly it was like we said i would never choose to do that i would never choose to look after the lead so would you do her wig in the morning, then Guy look after you'd look after her on set while she was off doing other other things? 
Well, I was with her most of the time, but because Guy could be there and guys could look after us if the wig was kind of, you know, as it, as it was for the day. But most of the time it was me, me and Guy with her all the time. But um, yeah, there was times when I was dressing the wig and the cleaners were kicking me out, you know, it was like, and then knowing I'd have to come back in at, Constantly apologising to cleaners, I'm so sorry, just a minute, just to try and get it right. And it was really hot. There was loads of things on that job. Like we didn't get Emma till about a week, a week out of shoot. She didn't fly over. And then the wigs, first time I tried it on her and it was about this shy all the way around the sides. And I was like, oh my God, it just, and I, I will never, none of us on the team could ever understand. We still can't figure out to this day the black and white throws your eye completely. I had the most amazing hairdressers and they were all looking at these wigs going, why can it, and it must be something to do with, the white doesn't look the same as the black. Yeah. It's really odd. So it was a, a, a real challenge, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and the hair was different texture because the white needed to be, the white was so processed. Yeah. If you set it on the same rollers, it would do one thing on one side and do another thing on the other. So. Honestly, that I just can't even, it was really, really strange. There was a couple of people I went to see in crowd who I know are like, you know, the absolute business and went, please, can you have a look at this? And they, and, and they went, no idea. I don't know why it's doing it. I don't know. It was, yeah, it was tough. So I'm a bit kind of, as much as I'm excited about it coming out, there's times when I'm going, <laughs> please let it be all right. It's phenomenal. So you know, pulled it off. So that's <laughs> Well, let's hope. Hey, go on, we have five more questions before we run out of time. Oh, okay, then, uh, lots to go through. Um, Nadine, um, Nadine, Nadine. Um, uh, where did you study? Where, when did you study and where? Um, I studied when I was, I didn't go till I was about 26, 27. Um, so a little while ago. Um, and uh, I studied at um, a course that was affiliated with Yorkshire Television. They don't do it anymore, but it was similar to the sort of BBC training. And you studied, I, I did um, media makeup um, through the week. And then we studied hairdressing a couple of nights a week for our NVQ. And then moved to London and got into the, um, started to work in theatres and sort of started that route. And then did the route up as a trainee in television drama, um, then as a junior, then as, you know, so it kind of worked my way through the, the ranks that way. And you didn't, I mean, obviously coming down to London, you didn't, I mean, there was no sort of contact or there was, was oh, there? I'm the most unlikely hair and makeup artist. There's absolutely nothing in my family. No one's involved in it at all. Didn't know anyone. Moved to London actually, because there was this big, there was, probably loads of people have heard me say this before, but I, I um, there was a job offered through my college to work full time on Emmerdale for two years. And there was a trainee and you, you know, and everyone's, I think there's two spaces and everyone said, oh, Nadia's got one of them, Nadia's got one of them. So I sort of was like, right, I'm gonna start looking at places in Leeds. This is what I'm doing, job straight out of college, great. And I didn't get it. And uh, I remember sitting on the steps at my mum's in absolute tears thinking that was a complete waste of my time. I'm now 28, I would have been by that point. What am I gonna do? I don't know anyone. And I just thought, I'm just going to go to London. So I got a job in the personnel office at um, the National Theatre. And they used to have to hand out the application forms every day. But I just kept wandering off and wandering around the theatre and looking at the wigs and like <laughs> sort of going in, going in the prop store room and stuff like that. And I badgered the lady in the wig room to give me a, a shot, basically. And she put me on some of the shows in the evening. So it was a real like, yeah, I mean, I absolutely just threw myself into it. I didn't, I didn't know anybody. But it's, I mean, that's, that's the, the sort of beauty of it is, you know, if you want it, if you want to do it, you know, you, you know, you've gone blind down to London, you know, so A, moving away and doing all these things and, and just, yeah, this is what I'm going to do and I'm going to do it, you know, for yeah, a think, year, two years. I mean, maybe being older as well, there was that thing of like, I don't, I, I've just done all this at college and I don't, there isn't another option now, so I have to do this. So I'm just going to go for it and sort of... Um, yeah, I look back on that time. I think now I'm like, oh, I can't be bothered now. But I look back on that time and think, if you told me to drive to Scotland to go and do a daily to wash Chris's brushes, I'd have done it. Do you know what I mean? I would have got, I'd have just whatever. I gave up going to anything, friends' parties, birthdays, anything, just to kind of get in. It was just blind ambition to to do it. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we've got my question: Is do you miss 
working on people, right? You know, rather than being a designer. You meant you mentioned earlier. Yeah, I do. Yes, I do. And sometimes when I see people get to do some really like fancy makeups or hair or something, I think, oh, that would have been that would have been nice to do. And I, so I do. Um, and I'm always kind of sticking my oar in a bit with that as well. <laughs> so, well, I used to be able to when you could when you could all muck in. But um, I do I do love designing, and I love I love the kind of getting it and the research and the kind of pulling it all together. I do love that. So, um, and I love watching what other people can do as well. I'm I, I still feel like that trainee when I've got you know you walk into a crowd on Cruella and you're just watching what those people are doing, and it's kind of like wow, you know. So, yeah, I do, but I do I do love designing. I mean, is there a case, I think, for Chrissy and uh, Nadia, is it, you know, like once you become a designer, you, you can't go back to, to being just a, a makeup artist or, or you can? Well, I think I, I think you definitely could. And I think there's a lot, I always see lots of people, lots of designers in crowd rooms who just want to come out for the day and have a play and probably for that reason as well. Um, I, cu I couldn't personally go back and work as an artist on someone's team just because I'd be trying to do it. <laughs> I'd be trying to take over. <laughs> they wouldn't want me to do it. But um, yeah, I suppose. But I don't know, Chrissy, would you? Oh, it's kind of, I don't, I don't know if I could. Um, and I think very much, I mean, it's kind of quite weird, even just sort of like listening to your sort of like story of, of your life. And um, we, we've got very similar backgrounds you know we don't come from a, a family that worked in, in the industry you know and, and we'd get up at five in the morning to sort of like you know do I, I used to do dummy runs the day before and you know always try to make sure that I was the best trainee they'd ever had and everything just because it was that need to succeed in it because nobody was gonna kind of sort of you know chuck money in my bank account if, if I if I wasn't gonna make it eventually you know um, but I don't know if I could um, go back and work on other teams no I, i'd like to think that i could but i think i, I i'd be very much like you I, I think i'd kind of i think i've designed too too much and too long and i and, I, and it's kind of interesting that that the question sort of that going back to your question from whoever sent in that question about as a designer do you miss doing makeups it's not that you don't do makeups because you the prep time and the setting up that's all you're doing you're doing makeups on people and and like and likewise when we're sort of saying that we're not on set, what we do do in the morning, and um, and like and, and again, it kind of sounds like we do very similar things, is we're very instrumental. It's, it's like I'm always there before, probably before the trainee in the morning, and um, on the main bus, and I will always be on the bus until the whole call. I mean, on the nevers, on my last one, we had four makeup buses running on the main teams, and I, I I would go from bus to bus, sort of just making sure and getting my hands in and sort of, you know, like, no, I need it this way. And, we, and no, that needs to be a bit messy. And, you know, we're very, as, as designers, I think it's harder for our, our teams to, to be accepting of the fact that we, you know, they might have worked really hard on makeup and we might come in and say, oh, can we just smudge this down a bit or take that back? Or it's very much, um, I don't, I, what I'm saying is, I, don't, I think as a designer, you don't stop doing makeup, you, you just, get the call out in the morning, you set up everybody's look, and then you've got to shift heads and go, okay, what's what's coming up over the next couple of weeks? What actors are flying in? You know, and, it's, it, and what wigs need to be ready? And, and you're kind of constantly working a week in front of everybody else, really. Yeah, that would work very, very I'm similar. Now, I think, I, I'm so used to being in, in charge of it all. I've got, you know, I'd like to think that I could. Me too, but I think I'd be terrible. They'd say, just shut up, do your job. <laughs> Stop telling me how to do it. This is my favourite period. I'll come out, I'll, I'll jump in with, with Char. <laughs> can we help Chrissy to back off? <laughs> we'll have to ask Charmaine, if she, yeah, would you like Chrissy to be in the crowd room with you, Char? <laughs> Is she's on here, isn't she? Is she listening? Oh, she, yeah, I yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw Charmaine and Charles coming out, so I'm sure. Um, well, one of the questions uh, from uh, Miriam and many others is, um, are there any particular books, Nadia, that, is there like a Bible that you, like if there's one book you had to sort of say, look, buy this one, get this one, it's, it's, it's brilliant, or, or is it just get as many as you can, or what, what advice would you give? Um, well, I'm, I mean, I'm a bit of a book nerd. So as the, in the last lockdown, I did I put a book a day on um, a reference book a day onto my Instagram. So if you have a look, there's loads on there that I love. 
I would say the kind of classics like um, the Richard Corson hair book is, is a, you know, that's, that is a proper Bible. There's so much information in that. So that's a really good one to get, but um, yeah, there's a few I love. I guess it just depends what you're doing, what the, what the period is. And I, I like to try and find things out of re like small details from, from lots of weird sources and references really. So there's not kind of one set book, but um yeah, definitely. All, all my absolute favourites are on my Instagram page. If you have a have a look, they're all on there. I, I mean, in this day and age, um, is it almost a case of you you don't need, you know, a book because of the internet, because of you know other sources and stuff that you don't need to buy it, or is it just it's good to have it as a, a dip in? Well, I'm probably the wrong person. I, I suppose you could do it all from the internet. But I think it's I think it's finding it from all different sources. It's you know you might find something from the internet, but also it, it's it's small little pictures you might find it in a book or um, uh, so I, I mean I would and when when the world's back to normal and we can do it again, you don't have to spend a fortune on them. Most of my books and I've got masses of them, are loads from charity shops. I get loads from secondhand bookshops and always having a look around and buying fashion books or hair books or photography books or you can get them pretty cheap as well so I think getting a nice collection of them is 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 a good way to start that's always where I start to, re to research and looking at Guy's bookcase behind him you do a lot of internet search <laughs> <laughs> I actually do have a lot of books but they're not on show at the moment <laughs> <laughs> My, my, my favourite book of all time is always this book called Least Wanted. Oh, have you got it? I bought it because you said in lockdown, you said about it. It's, it's still my fa my favourite book. And, and I kind of just love it because it's so, um, it, it's so, so real, really. Um, I don't know where it's gone. It's maybe, maybe I've lost my copy of it. Who knows? Um, I mean, it's also a good idea to put together your own scrapbooks. Like, I mean, we always sort of say that to, to sort of students, you know, sort of that they should be putting together little folders. I mean, I did that when I first finished my course years ago. You know, on my weeks off, I'd kind of put together a folder of the 20s and a folder of the 30s. I'd, every week I'd, I'd give myself a topic, you know, a, an era to cover and put together books on it. And family photos and that. Well, and I know I've said this before as well, because family photos, um, you know, are, are brilliant. I've got this whole thing that I, I reckon that there's going to be loads of films being made in the 70s and the 80s soon. Oh, that. yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the same, though. I think um, family photos and things like that are like, because then you get what real people look like. You yeah. Know? yeah. I love, there's loads of different things on Instagram. Like, there's one called Old School Mums. And it's... Um, and it's just mum, it's people have put their mums on throughout the ages. So there's like really bad perms and really, but they just look like no, they are normal yeah, people. Yeah, they're yeah. Mums. And those sorts of research, I think are brilliant. They're, they're great. And yeah, if you follow something like that, it'll, you know, recommend other things similar. I mean, there's almost no excuse now that, that people, let's say, you know, from the students or to, to, you know, trainees or juniors or makeup artists, whoever, not to have a good, you know source of research because it's just there's, there's an abundance out there you know well we've just had um Charmaine just um sent through because Charmaine's going to be running the crowd on on my next job and um she asked our trainees and juniors to do a bit of their own research so I'd done my research and sent it over and and some of what they came back with we were so impressed with we were like oh god this is amazing you know they'd gone off and done their own research and found things and found videos and old pathé footage and it was amazing and and that again is like we we're going back to what we were saying earlier the, the people that do that you go oh you you've got it you you yeah, just got exactly. it because you want it it's really yeah, impressive the thing to get them to do as well isn't it i mean it's a really good um good point that a, but that's not normal is that normal nadia or, or is I've that I've not had that before. I've not had that until working with Charmaine. She she'd gone. She'd got them to do that, and it's such a brilliant thing to do because their heads in it. Then you know they're starting yeah, to yeah, see yeah. the they're starting to see at least what the shape should be. Even if they don't know exactly how to construct their hairstyle, they know roughly what world we're in. So yeah, it's a great thing to do. Uh, there's one question here from Maddox. Um, could someone explain what the crowd is? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go on, Chrissy. <laughs> is everybody behind me? <laughs> uh, the crowd is is they they kind of sort of um, well, there's a crowd crowd rooms 
which are, are run, uh, like, like we say, by, by um, Charmaine and, and other very clever people. They, they, uh, it's, where, it's where the crowd in films, so we'll do the principal actors, like every, everybody who talks is a principal actor and they'll come through um, the main makeup bus because, you know, if you talk, the camera's going to be here on you. Uh, and then you kind of need people walking about in the background, you know, if you're doing a dance or, or something or a club, you need uh, you need the crowd there, marketplace scenes and things like that. So um, Charmaine's job is to is to sort of what I don't know how it works with with you, Nadia, but but uh, you know, we'll me and when Charmaine's working with me, we'll sit down and we'll talk about all the events that are happening in the film. Very, I mean, she's very much on board at the start of prep with us. And we'll talk about everything that's happening and then she'll sort of go away come back with a, a bit of a number crunching thing and tell me how many people she needs to get 300 people out on set for that day um so it's, it's basically the, the crowd is all of the extras um that are in the background and uh it's kind of sort of uh, it, it's charmaine and other crowd supervisors job that's that's their job is to kind of sort of make sure that they're kind of sort of doing whatever it, whatever look it is that we we've sort of asked them to kind of come up with you know whether it's victorian or, or 50s or 60s and it's their job to kind of sort of get all the wigs and everything ready get all their teams ready get everybody there in the morning um sort out all the crowd i mean it's a massive job it really is it's flipping not for the faint-hearted they're really kind of the unsung heroes though aren't they because you know the crowds kind of they they paint the world so if we've got a job that's set in the 1950s and that shot opens out on Soho in London in 1955. And you've got all people milling around. Yep. You need to believe you're in 1955. So it's, you know, it's their job to do that. And they're kind of, you know, the stuff on Cruella as well. I mean, there's so many, there's about four different balls that they go to, these huge balls, and they've all got a different theme. So you'd have, it's a bit of inside information, but one day you'd have like uh, people in 18th century or people in Vikings walking past, all in the same crowd room on the same day because there was all these different pockets of people and like the stuff they were pulling out and doing was just incredible. So, well, they they are absolutely, and also I always find you you get some of the best hairdressers and wig work done in, in the crowd room, and and I think it's. It, I kind of think that sometimes, I mean, I always think that the times that the place to show off is in crowd, you know, because sometimes with your principal actors, you can't do great big makeups, you can't do big fancy wigs, um, because you've got to do it every day, all the time that they're in. And I think, you know, in a, in a good crowd room, you know, that, that, that's, that's where they kind of excel, you know, you have all of these incredible hairdressers and wig workers that can literally make stuff out of nothing. Um, and I know because I think you've got Shaz with you as well, haven't you? And, and she, yeah. she um, the amount of times, even on the Nevers, when I've, I've worked with Shah and, and Shaz, and I will sort of, you know, I'll throw something at them and say, oh, God, I need this done at any chance. And I literally go out there and it's in the wig oven within, you know, an hour. So, I mean, it's, they are, yeah, like you say, they're the unsung heroes. And I do kind of sort of think, um, as far as important people that you're working with, I know for me, I've got my, my um, I'd always say that it's my core, like when I start a job, I'll always get Lisa, who's my, my um, main supervisor on the main bus and, and Charmaine, who, who always does the, the crowd with us. I will always get them to on first because that's my core, core people that I need to talk to about the principles and about the crowd. And that, that's where it all evolves. That that's, that they're like at the top of the thing. And then it all filters down from them really to kind of for the show to run smoothly yeah you've got they're kind of your insurance aren't they you're like right if i've got them i'm all right exactly. and then <laughs> we can figure the rest out yeah, yeah. any more questions Mr. What, what, what? yeah yeah um we've got um a question for guy um what would be the key thing that you think uh makes a perfect junior slash trainee and uh was there anything that you struggled with um oh gosh <laughs> uh i would say well all the things that we've discussed just being open to um oh one of the things that i pride myself on is never being afraid to ask for help <laughs> so if you feel that you're if you're attacking a problem and you think that it's you just want to get some advice then don't be afraid to ask for help because it's if you try and bodge it then that's going to be worse than if you just say, you know what, I need someone to come and help me with this. Or, you know, would someone just have a look over this for me to make sure that I'm on the right track? 
And so um, I know that on Cruella or on any of the jobs, actually, the supervisor. So if you if you're not able to speak to the designer, because obviously they'll be super busy, then you've got the supervisors there and they've always been amazing and always super open to helping you and to giving you advice or, you know, recommending a particular way to approach a problem. So I think definitely always be open to ask for, asking for help. Definitely. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I think, sorry, Guy, but I think that's a bit, you know, that's confidence with, with you or with Nadia and Chrissy where to go, oh, I don't know, you know, because as Nadia said, you can't know everything. And, and you know, yeah. the pressure on the designer is you all, in theory, that, oh, it's a designer, she must know everything, you know, and yeah. it's going, well, actually, no, I don't, you know. I comes cool. before a fall. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to be able to, like, I, you know, I feel like the smartest move I ever did was, or still do, is fill my teams with people that are brilliant as well, because then I can go, hey, I'm thinking this, but I'm not sure how to do this, or to be, to be brave enough to say, don't know how to do it. You know, mm -hmm. I've absolutely, no, there's no way I could have achieved what we achieved on Cruella without Guy. And that there's like, I'm, that's an absolute, I wouldn't have been able to do it. So, it doesn't matter if you're the designer or the trainee. Absolutely, like I said, just just ask. Yeah, definitely. That, that again, and, and Guy, you have pointed out the importance for good supervisors as well, because it's like you know sometimes our as designers our heads are in a different space, but your supervisor should always be there, you know, to sort of work out if there is a problem. That, you know, and then if if it is a problem, then they'll bring it to us. And part of our job as a designer is to kind of out the flames a little bit and just say okay let, let's troubleshoot this uh if you've got a problem let's see how we can make it work and things so again you know it is it is sort of knowing who to talk to i think isn't it yeah yeah we're really we i've been really lucky like, with my supervisors as well and carolyn has worked with me a lot you know particularly in the last few jobs just again a really good relationship and kind of knows what to shoulder from me or then what to bring into me and that you know it just worked it worked really well but is always super open for all of her amazing knowledge to anyone that's on the team very happy to kind of go this is how I would do something or you know to teach as well so it's good. Well, one of the questions actually leads on nicely there Nadia, is do you keep the same team do you make a conscious effort to try and change it or does it depend on the project you're working on? Um, I don't make like a conscious effort to go, right, I want a new team on this. And I think like um, Chrissy said, you have certain people that you just feel like from right from the beginning, you have some you have some backup right from the beginning and you know there's a shorthand and it takes a lot of away from you right from the beginning. Um, but I do look at what the job is. And, you know, if it was a heavy prosthetics job, or a period job or whatever that is, then that might dictate what kind of people that I need on the team. Um, I have I have a kind of a big core team that have moved around a little bit for the last few months. So um, Niall Mann worked with me for years and he's he's amazing and he hasn't worked with me for the last couple of jobs, but just because we sort of, we've moved around a bit and he'll come back. And so, um, but I do, I do tend to keep some sort of core people, but I'm really trying to make an effort. We talked about, I think we touched on it a bit on the last lockdown, but really trying to make an effort um, to kind of bring more diversity into my teams and to change that landscape as well. Feel very passionate about that. And also for new people. So actually on this, Charmaine and I have chatted and we have very much kind of made it a priority to bring in people that have never had the shop before or, you know, somebody that might have kept in touch with me. And it's really paid off because there's a lot of people on coming in. We might just be getting them in for a week so that they can have some experience, but way more people will be able to come away from it and say, we've had a week on a, on a film. So I'm definitely trying to do that a lot more. I think, I mean, cause obviously a lot of questions coming in are, you know, how do you start? How do you break in? I mean, we, you know, we've touched upon it, like you said there, you know, it, it, there's no, as far as I'm aware, you know, there's no kind of quick fix. There's no, you know, there's no one right path. There are many different paths. I mean, with me and Chrissy were talking and, you know, when Chrissy started out um, 75 years ago, um, it was kind of, um, <laughs> you know, but there, you know, the, it, Chrissy didn't was, react, nothing. <laughs> there was, um, you yeah, know, there was a thing of, um, 
you know, it, it was, you know, pounding the streets. It was going out, phoning on the telephone box. You know, you do whatever it takes to do. It's, you know, trying to be patient. I think you mentioned earlier about, uh, you know, not, you know, you know, not expecting kind of thing, you know, and just, I'm, I've started, I'll finish, you know, however long it takes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard and each designer will say a different thing I think I mean I've had so many people I've ever there's a lot of people that have either coming out on this one or the last one that have come through Instagram for me I, I feel like I sort of know them they sent me lots of messages or they just kind of go still here just sort of sending it in and it's really paid off for some people and you know I, obviously I can't get everybody out and I you know try but um that that's worked for for lots of them and I feel like whatever the means is I'm not going to know who you are if you're just sat in your bedroom dreaming of being a makeup designer. I'm not going to know who you are. So you've got to get out there some, some way. You might bug some people, but other people will go, no, come on then. You just hit them at the right time when they need a trainee. And, you know, we can get them in. I think actually a couple of questions came in, Amy, and a couple of other just asked that, you know, is it okay to contact designers and artists through social media? And, and yeah, I suppose it is and it isn't, you know, it depends on the person. It totally depends on the person. I feel like it's changed massively. We didn't have that when I was breaking in. If we had, would I have done it? Yeah, absolutely. Because I would have done whatever it was to kind of go, hey, I'm here and I, you know, I want a shot. But I, I don't mind at all. I, I feel like it's being proactive and um, it, it's just totally going to depend on the designer. But for me, I'm fine with it. Um, <laughs> Instagram account over the next couple of days. <laughs> I know. I always do that, and then it goes bing, 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 bing. <laughs> You're like, I'll try. I promise. <laughs> well, there's um, we're running out of time, but uh, the last question uh, from Vanessa, I think, would kind of finish off the um, a lovely morning. Um, if you could give your past self as a student any advice, what would it be? Now, Go on, you, bye. you can start. <laughs> Well, I think just to reiterate what I've said already, well, because also when I went to do the course, obviously I was an adult. I was, you know, in my thir early 30s, as I am now. And so studying when you're an adult um, is a very different ballpark. You know, I was so keen. I think I was probably even a bit too keen, to be honest. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit annoying. But I think, yeah, just using every single opportunity and asking as many questions and, you know, following up and doing your own homework and your own research, um, just to kind of make it as beneficial as you possibly can. Um, and, you know, not to because also the fact that the teachers were people working in the industry and they could potentially be someone that would offer you work that's another amazing opportunity so and there are people that I've definitely reached out to after the course that have said yeah I'll definitely keep you in mind for things and I've even had you know bits days on other jobs through that so it's been you know the most amazing opportunity to network and to build your contacts as well so that's what I would say. Communication. What would you tell your younger self, Nadia? Uh, I was just thinking that. I think what I'd say was, what would be, is that to kind of not be too hard on yourself and also to realise that as much as, as this is important and it's a fantastic career, is that it's, it's dress up and make believe and it's entertainment and it's like, you know, it... it I've, I put everything I got into it and I was like, I have to make it work, I have to make it work. And it's only now I'm starting to go, oh, okay. And I, I can do that from the position that I'm in, but also to, um, yeah, just not to take it too seriously and just to kind of, you know, you have to have quite a thick skin and uh, um, not to worry about it too much, I think. Um, and I also think being happy in your own life it really helps in, <laughs> in, in this industry. I think if you're kind of, you know, you have an, a, a happy time outside of it it's uh, it really helps it's one of christine's mantras isn't it yeah and don't forget <laughs> to enjoy yourself you know, enjoy it you know um christy what would you say to your younger self these these two guys have said it all that's that's exactly what i'd say i'd, I'd be I'd, I'd kind of sort of um uh you know work ethic is always a good thing you know before you come into this industry it's good to have a good work ethic and what I, I quite often sort of say to people who want to come into this industry, you know, go out and get some other jobs first, even if it's kind of, you know, working in Sainsbury's or whatever, just get a work ethic. And also you'll never understand what a great 
industry and fun industry as can be until you've kind of done a couple of shit jobs along the way. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's um, you know, it's, it's all, a bit, it, it, there's a lot of teamwork involved in this, you know, a lot of looking after each other and things. And um, you, it, it, it's an industry that doesn't tolerate nasty people. You've got, you've got to be a bit of a people's person and look after people, I think. Hopefully. Yeah. That's what I myself on the t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, thank you so much. Um, well, you'll never be in Ask Questions. Pete, what would you say? Let's fire a few questions at your way before we hang up. Oh, uh, what would I say? Well, if I was into the going into the industry, I'd say, um, I think, again, like you said, covered all the things. I think communication. Uh, Nadia mentioned reading a room. You know, like you, communication and reading a room, knowing when you should be really boisterous and happy or knowing when you should be sort of quiet and, and listen. Excuse me, I've got a really good one for you, Pete. Sorry, last one. Um, and then, um, you know, when you're when you're here with the course, because obviously Pete, you run the school, you know, I'm, I'm usually out filming things. When you're on the course and you've got a students coming in every day for four months, do you know who is going to be a successful person, graduate? Uh, this we don't normally do this asking me questions by the way this is what i'm loving it on the spot um i don't well a lot of people a lot of a lot of people kind of um you know some of the tutors do say oh i can tell you i think who's going to make it who's not i don't i don't like the 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 remark or the question because i think everyone has the chance has the opportunity to um to succeed there's no reason why not but you know nearing the end of the four months you do get and it's the it's the ones that sort of slip up on the timing on coming in late you know too often and just not having that passion that drive and you you know so here you know then we kind of try and encourage them and say look we you know we you know when you're out now when you go out you've got to you know pick it up and step up a gear and 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 sometimes it's it's not the the skill level. It's it's almost the silly ones about timing and 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 organisational planning. This is it's a long it's a long. I mean, you've got to be committed to do to do the course. I think I think that that in itself is is a good thing. I think it's pretty much length of a film. So it's sustain. You've got to sustain that that um, level of commitment, haven't you? My tutor said she she knew there was like three of us and she said she knew right from the beginning. And I think it is that there's no way that I was the best makeup artist on the course. No way. But, oh, my, I would have been there 10 minutes before waiting for the door to open. You know, I was like, absolutely never missed a course, never missed a day. You know, and I think it is what Chrissy said that carries on into it. Can't be late. You can't. You just can't. We our industry works on timings. Every single bit of our day is works on timings. And so it's just you, you can't be. I mean, we, I mean say to the, we say to the students on the first morning when, when me and Chrissy have the chat and it's like, you know, today's the day, you know, you treat today as if this is, you're on set, you're on Chrissy's film and you're going to do exactly what a trainee should do. So keeping it tidy, being punctual, listening, you know, doing all the things that you would on a project. It's that simple, really. And, yeah. and you know, uh, the majority of people get it and, and the odd person you know, struggles uh, to understand that, but we, you know, we beat it into them. <laughs> no, we don't. That's what I do to Guy. Yeah. <laughs> Black and blue. <laughs> I, I would have said to guys, a younger self, just try and be so shy. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just come out of your shell a little bit. Come out of your shell. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, thank you very much for cheering up this miserable Saturday morning. Um, and it's been absolute pleasure, as always, Nadia and Guy. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and, and giving us your time. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in. Next week, uh, we've got uh, the beautiful, lovely Loz, uh, who is coming on with Juliana, uh, one of our graduates. Gosh, Juliana, forgive me, I think 10 years ago, possibly. So um, that will be a good uh, chat uh, for next week. Again, the experiences, and I love that sort of, you know, designer slash CBMA graduate chatting kind of thing. Yeah, I love that also when you, when you mentioned Niall Mann, because he was here as well. He was, yeah. 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 I was going to mention Niall, yes, yes. 
Well, yeah, I've, yeah, I've stolen Niall as well. He's another one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been so lovely. Thank you both for asking. It's been absolute lovely. pleasure. Uh, I see Corella. Mm. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Guy and I will be watching it like that for yeah. time. <laughs> Is it over yet? <laughs> I'm so scared about about the future of cinema at the moment. Are they talking about cinema release for it? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they were. And the date that the date that it's coming out is the date that it that it was. It hasn't shifted again because of this. So it, you know, that's that's the the current plan that it's cinema. And but yeah, I don't know. Guys, everyone, if you're still I listening, hope so. please go, please go as often as you can. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. This is our livelihood. It's um. We don't make it everything for TVs. It's a TV screen. Curious. It's a, there's something about a day out, isn't there? Oh well, yeah. Everyone, everyone's enjoyed. We're getting lots and lots of thank yous and brilliant uh, about me answering questions at the end. <laughs> the bit at the beginning wasn't too bad. They're saying as well. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> this is on a high. And we'll talk soon. <laughs> thank Thanks you. so much. Bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. 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 bye.